Hello and welcome to the Fast Forward Sailing News Show. This week our top stories are Will the AC75 class be the America's Cup class for the next two cups? Will the Olympics go ahead? Who will be replacing Sir Ben Ainsley at the helm of the British boat for the next two CLGP events? And which class will be the final class chosen for the 2024 Olympics? Like last time, you can skip to whichever section of the video you want. So we have a section on the America's Cup, a section on CLGP, and a section on anything else. So if CLGP is not your cup of tea, you can always skip ahead to, say, the Olympic sailing section. Before we get into the video, consider subscribing to the channel for regular sailing news updates. And if you're already subscribed, hit the like button, and that will help this video reach more sailing fans. With that said, let's get into our first news story. The second event of SailGP is fast approaching. It will be taking place in Taranto, Italy on the 5th and 6th of June. The big news in the lead up to the event is that Sir Ben Ainsley, who led the British team to victory last time round, will not be helming the British boat for the next two SailGP events in Italy and the UK respectively. Instead, Olympic gold medalist, three-time MOF world champion, and I'll add American Magic team member, Paul Goodison, will join the British team as helm. The article reads that due to long-standing personal commitments, Ben Ainsley will not compete in the next two events. However, Ben will continue to leave the team in his role as CEO, and he will return as helm for the Denmark Cell GP. Now, Paul Goodison boasts a pretty amazing sailing CV. He competed for Team GP at three Olympics, winning gold in Beijing, and was crowned Laser World Champion in 2009. And if you know just how competitive a laser class is, you'll know just what a feat that is. Following his Olympic retirement, Goodison headed into the world of foiling, becoming a three-time MOF World Champion. And given his experience in the America's Cup, I wouldn't be surprised to see him up there in the results at the next two GPs. The rest of the British team remains the same, except for the female trialist, who last time was Olympic gold medalist Hannah Mills. Now stepping in is Anna Burnett, who qualified in the NACRA class for the next Olympics, uh, which we hope will be happening this year. I know Anna personally from my time on the British sailing team, so it's great to see her get an opportunity like this. More Sail GP now. We have an interview with Sir Ben Ainsley. Recapping the last Sail GP event, he says, We really struggled on the opening day but we kept our heads high and went through all the issues and tried to work them out. This resulted in a much better second day, which was a cracking day of racing. Ben Ainsley also broke the Sail GP speed record, recording a speed of 94.8 km per hour. And for those of you who want that in knots, that is around 51 knots. Ben Ainsley goes on to say that to achieve the Sail GP speed record and win the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix on the same day, it does not get much better. Right, on to the next news story now, and we're going to head back over a month ago to this article, which reads, World Sailing Chief claims distinct possibility sailing could lose its 10th medal at the Paris 2024 Olympics. The International Olympic Committee formally requested World Sailing put forward a different event to the controversial mixed-gender offshore event after uncovering three concerns with the discipline, including additional broadcasting costs and field of play security. Now, just some background here. World Sailing voted in this event democratically as the event they wanted to see at the next games, probably largely as a result of trying to work out how to get an event with equal male and female participation. So World Sailing voted on the event, submitted it to the International Olympic Committee, and basically the International Olympic Committee has come back to them saying, we have some issues, so we'd like you to submit an alternative event uh, so that in case we don't run the offshore racing, we have a backup. And that's why the World Sailing CEO mentioned there was a distinct possibility that sailing could lose its 10th medal. Because if they don't agree an alternative, then the International Olympic Committee has the power to refuse the running of the offshore events, thus leaving sailing with one less Olympic event and therefore one less Olympic medal. The International Olympic Committee set a May 26th deadline for world sailing to send its alternatives to the mixed offshore event. That deadline is fast approaching and a few days ago World Sailing approved alternative events to the mixed offshore event. They approved mixed kiteboarding as their first choice and a mixed two-person dinghy for men and women as their second choice. The classes those events would be sailed in 
would be the Formula Kite class for the kiteboard and the 470 for the two-person dinghy. So with kiteboarding being the first choice alternative, if I was a betting man, I would say that we're most likely to see kiteboarding at the 2024 games over the mixed offshore class and the mixed two-person dinghy. I'd be interested in getting your thoughts on this. Which class would you prefer to see at the 2024 Olympics? And are we moving too far away from sailing with the introduction of kiteboarding? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So going on with this story, we see in this article that World Sailing voted solidly in favour of a separate men's and women's kiteboard ahead of the separate men's and women's 470 events. So to give you a little bit of background here, the 470 for the last few Olympic cycles has been split into a male class and a female class. Uh, the proposal for the 2024 games was to combine the two into one class. So on board each boat would be one male sailor and one female sailor. This proposed alternative event would split the two classes again back into men's and women's. Unfortunately, this vote didn't go the way of the Finn class, who had submitted a joint entry with the Europe class for a mixed gender event. So it looks like this is the final nail in the coffin for the Finn class, which will end its 69 year history in the Tokyo 2020 Olympic regatta. I think it's supposed to say 2021 there, if indeed that event takes place. Now, amongst all this voting on an alternative proposal, World Sailing have made very clear to the International Olympic Committee that they do prefer the offshore racing event. This is an interview with America's Cup commentator and multiple Olympic gold medalist Shirley Robertson. She explains why offshore racing is a good thing for sailing and the Olympics. If the offshore event did go ahead, it would create the longest race course in the Olympics. With round the clock competition over a short coastal track, the race is expected to be around three days long. Double handed racing is one of sailing's biggest growth areas. The announcement that double handed offshore racing was under consideration for the Olympics also attracted new sailors and returning sailors into the Olympic sailing fold. One of those was Shirley Robertson, one of the most successful female Olympic sailors of all time. Shirley Robertson believes that introducing the new class to the 2024 Games hosted in Paris would generate huge spectator engagement. She says, I've been to so many French offshore racing starts and they are without doubt the most supported sports events I have ever been to. It's no coincidence that the offshore discipline was proposed for the Paris Games. The sport is massive in France and the interest it would create within the public and media would be huge. So, as far as Paris 2024 goes, it's a complete no-brainer. It would be amazing. Moving forward, I can't think of a recent Games where an offshore coastal race would not have been an exciting addition. And looking at 2028, I'm sure the same could be achieved in Los Angeles. But more than that, double-handed offshore sailing at the Olympics would represent a vast sector of the sport of sailing and repeat the curiosity of a significant sector of participants that has no interest in dinghy racing. Now personally, I wasn't sure what to think about this proposal, but Shirley Robertson's arguments are compelling. To an outsider watching Olympic sailing, most likely they're going to see most of it as the same. So for instance, why would they watch the 470 class over the 49er? This offshore event adds another dimension, and it encompasses a huge array of sailing fans who perhaps aren't interested in traditional dinghy racing. It only takes two medals and it's a good way of levelling the playing field to allow men and women to compete in the same class. Let me know your thoughts below. Do you think the International Olympic Committee is right to ask World Sailing to come up with a proposal for an alternative event? Shirley Robertson goes on to say that offshore racing would create a different pathway into long-term inclusion and commitment in the sport. She refuses to accept the International Olympic Committee's assertion that the event would be difficult to broadcast. She says that taking into account the resources that the Olympic broadcaster had in Rio to cover a medal race course, I find this pretty hard to accept. The early rounds of the America's Cup in Auckland were covered with one chase boat and one helicopter. CellGP have to date used one helicopter and one chase boat. She says she is baffled why it suggested the broadcast would cost millions more. To my mind, the multi-day offshore event should be a mouth-watering prospect to the broadcast offering from the Games, a one-of-a-kind showcasing sailing with imaginative coverage. 
and tracking. What a massive interactive opportunity. The Sydney to Hobart race, the Middle Sea race, the Fastnet race, they're all covered with a fraction of the Olympic broadcast budget. Robertson is also critical of the International Olympic Committee forcing World Sailing to come up with an alternative class. To be scrambling around with a six week time frame looking for another medal option that fits the International Olympic Committee's criteria when in reality we are already a year into the Paris cycle is utterly unacceptable. And I certainly agree with her on that. Now before we go on to the next news story I just want to quickly mention my website which you might find of interest. Uh, it's called dinghyracingtips.com. Basically, it does what it says on the tin. I have lots of articles on there on a variety of sailing topics. You can choose from boat handling, boat speed, tactics and more. Recently, I've been trying to get in guest authors to share their expertise. So the last two articles on there you'll see have been written by Nick Craig, who if you don't know, is one of the world's most successful amateur sailors, having won numerous world championships, including in the OK class. So if you're interested in improving your sailing, head over there after this video. Moving on to our next story now, will the Tokyo Olympics go ahead? Tokyo doctors are calling for the cancellation of the 2021 Olympics. A top medical organization in Japan has thrown its weight behind calls to cancel the Tokyo Olympics, saying hospitals are already overwhelmed as the country battles a resurgence of the virus less than three months from the start of the Summer Games. Now, will this lead to the cancellation of the Games? I don't see them pushing it back another year to 2022 like they did last time, and there is significant opposition to the Games amongst the Japanese public. However, the Prime Minister has said that holding a safe and secure Olympic Games was possible if tight preventative measures were implemented, including actions that would keep ordinary Japanese from coming into contact with those arriving in connection with the Games. However, it seems far from certain that the Games will go ahead. The approval of World Sailing's latest financial statements looks like it's being delayed because the International Olympic Committee has yet to respond to a request for a confirmation that Tokyo is going ahead. This might give rise to speculation that the International Olympic Committee is privately less convinced that the Games can proceed in July than it appears in public. World Sailing says that they are yet to receive confirmation from the IOC that the Games will go ahead. As mentioned last week, the Olympics are pretty crucial for World Sailing's finances. Last week, World Sailing CEO David Graham revealed that World Sailing would have gone into liquidation had it not been for a $3.1 million loan from the IOC. The postponement of the Tokyo Olympics would have been the final nail in the coffin for World Sailing had they not been given the loan. On to some America's Cup news now. This is an article from Sailing Scuttlebutt entitled America's Cup, Where Do We Go Now? So this is a list of what's been announced about the next cup so far. The protocol will be published in mid-November 2021. The venue will be announced by mid-September and the dates will be announced by mid-November. The AC-75 class, the class used in the last America's Cup, will be used for the next two America's Cup cycles. And you may have been wondering how they can guarantee that the AC-75 class would be maintained for two cycles. Because surely if a winner of the next America's Cup didn't want to use the AC-75 class, they could change to another class. This backed up rumours that the next America's Cup could be taking place between just two teams, namely Team New Zealand and Ineos Team UK. A pact between the two teams could have been made to ensure that whoever won the next cup would select the AC-75 class for the cup after that. However, it looks like this two-boat event between Team UK and Team New Zealand wouldn't be needed to ensure the AC-75 for the next two cup cycles. According to this article, agreement to using the AC-75 for the cup after the next cup will be a condition of entry. So, do you think this is against the spirit of the America's Cup? A key concept of the America's Cup is that the winner decides the rules, down to which class the event is raced in. This seems like a move away from that, and a pretty significant one. Personally, I like the AC-75 class, and I think the America's Cup could do with this continuity. It will help with two core issues, namely increasing the number of teams, and increasing the closeness of the racing. Because as the teams have more time in the boat, there will be less and less big jumps forward in innovation to be made. And so the racing should, in theory, be closer. I personally can see both sides of the argument here. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Right, so that's it for the video this week. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. It costs nothing for you to do, and it really does help the channel. 
If you don't want to miss out on future sailing news videos, uh, press the subscribe button and then the alert bell. The alert bell is important because that's what will get YouTube to send you a notification each time I release a new video. With that said, I hope to see you in the next video.